We're here at Rotec, a manufacturing and technology provider. Throughout today's show, we're going to find out why this company is so successful from the managing director, Paul Butler, and how they have been able to reshore so much work back to the UK. Chloe, why do you think Rotec is so successful? Rotec, I think, are so successful because they're so confident in thinking out the box. They don't just go down one line. They're always thinking of the next innovative solution, new technology. And that's quite that's quite expensive as well for, a, for an engineering company, but Rotec do it so well. And I think what you're trying to say is they go outside the box. Maybe they have the confidence to go to places that others might not. Definitely. So I'm going to find out a little bit more about these CMG Morris and the automation on these machines. I'm going to find out a little bit more about the Nakamura range. A little bit more, I think a you know quite more. a lot. And we'll both find out about the Star machines and what they're doing with those. Rotex so successful? You make like a bottle of roses. Uh, no, we try to be successful. Uh, we think that the reason we're doing well, well we have been doing well through a very difficult time, is basically down to investing in the, in the, in the best machines, the best people and uh, getting the right systems in place. You have a huge United Kingdom flag at the top of your machine shop. Why have you done this? I think it's just a reminder to remind us all what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve and we feel proud about what we're doing. You know, we're doing a lot of reshoring of parts from places like China. I mean, we, everybody knows they're super competitive and we're very proud of the fact we can beat them. Because what we're, we're really concentrating on a machine utilization and using the best that we've learned over the years with automation, uh, the systems that we use internally to actually get our machine utilization times right up so we can lower our costs. So I'm at Rotex, stood between two NTRX 300, which they've invested heavily in. And as you can see to the left of me, the machine's stopped now, but the, it has a B-axis swinging head with two operations. So obviously we can have the OP1 and then we transfer over to the OP2. So as we can see here, OP1 is a full cylindrical part and OP2, as you can see, we've got this angled face on there. So it's great technology that Rotec have invested in and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lead you over to another new technology that they've recently bought off ETG which is the MX100 and here as you can see it's a great setup brand new machine which they've invested heavily and a lot of money in it as well very clean very high spec and it's a great value purchase for their leading list of machine tools Ultimately, we're trying to take what we've learned from the small, fully automatic machines like the Stars and uh, really use that, those philosophies and make it work on the bigger machines. Unfortunately, those systems don't exist off the shelf, so we've got to develop them ourselves. So our utopia is developing a very versatile manufacturing system where we can make all kinds of parts on the same systems very quickly, accurately and competitively. You're looking at the Eco Mill. This is a three axis vertical machining centre with four axis capability. This here is a CMX, so this is a three plus two. But what I do want to show you is this full five axis machine. Now, of course, we're talking about DMG Morris, but what's unique here is this. Rotec believe in automation. That's kind of going to help bring the price and everything to become more competitive, the products they produce. What's interesting though, this robot, follow me this way, goes from here, this cell. See these dots here on the floor? It connects and moves to this cell, so it automates this work. And as we come further down, get a bit of a pace on, it goes to these dots here, and it automates on this machine as well. So again, Rotec are utilizing automation and making the most out of their machines. Now they use a software that enables them to measure the efficiency of these machines. And some of these are running at like 90%. That's incredible, isn't it? You know, when we talk about vertical machining centers, maybe sometimes running at 30, 40%, they are making the most and making these spindles turn. Now, the DMU 75 monoblock, funny story, but I asked Paul why he went for this machine when he said, well, it's a sexy machine, isn't it? But there is a reason behind the purchase, behind its capabilities and what it can do is, They've opened up capacity 
from their milling section, but also they've just got their aerospace accreditation. So again, this coincides with that purchase too. Again, using DMG Mori as a brand, you've got high technology and you're always on the cusp of the latest and greatest technology as well. Basically, over the last year, we've spent an absolute fortune. We spent, you know, loads of money um, and we put a load of new machines in. We've got a brand new extension, a load of new people on. So we probably added another 75% capacity into the business. So the next job is we need to sell that and really get the best out of it. Uh, that's what we're focused on. So that's our focus now, really sales, the right customers, the right partnerships, and develop those long-term -term arrangements with, with our customers. You've got so many Star machines. It's well over 10, 15. Yeah. Um, why do you keep going back to Star? We just think it's an awesome piece of kit, great company to work with. Really, really, uh, they're all engineers. Not, it's not full of salespeople just trying to sell me something because they've got it in stock and they just give you the right solution for the right job. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Lindsay, nine. What are you doing? I'm counting all of the star machines that Paul's got. I think it's something like 17 machines. It's amazing. And the reason why, Paul, and there's so many reasons actually why he's gone for star machines, but the main one is the fact that they are able to have less human intervention. They're an all-encompassing machine and automation. And that's what he's trying to mirror with his vertical machining center. Yeah, 100%. They've invested so much in these stars, as you can see. And the sliding headways are just great for accuracy, great for the part. So let's take a look, Lindsay. Let's take yeah, a look. Yeah, because you're more from a machining center background than sliders, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. So I don't know actually a lot about sliders, but today of what Paul said, and we've heard from Matt as well, they've given a lot of information about the Y-axis and the tolerances that they can get on these machines. And also, don't forget, Sliding head machines are changing and evolving over time and a lot of the time where you'd expect a turned part usually to come off a slider, they're prismatic parts that actually years ago people didn't expect and that's what these machines are producing and interestingly, and Paul has told us, he's brought a lot of work back from countries far, far away back to the UK that he's proud of because of his star reign. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, they're diversifying into new engineering sectors because of these. Fortune favours the brave. The reason we invest so heavily in uh, new machinery is because we want to be, we stay out of the curve, always. Um, I mean, in terms of the MX, nothing more MX100 we bought, first one in Europe. Everybody's a little bit unsure, wait and see what happens with it. We were the first people to have an NTY3 in the UK by a long way and that's one of the most popular machines they sell because we proved that it can do things that other CNC machine tools can't do. Uh, we like to be the first. One of the areas of growth for us has been based in space. We've done a lot of work for space, which is fantastic. We, we, all, we all really enjoy it. It's quite exciting. Super fast turnaround, super high quality. Uh, you know, we're getting very complex 3D models and we're turning them around with various outside processes on them within two or three weeks, which is what they need. And these things are launched like within a six week time frame. It's crazy the way it's got, what's going on with that at the moment. We're hearing a lot of the time the word diversification in terms of what areas that you work in. So what is it that you've done and has the pandemic changed what you do in any way? Um, it's changed the way we work obviously a little bit um, with the distancing of things and obviously a lot more meetings are done now with Zoom and Teams and whatever which actually allows you to do more. Although I still kind of, I guess, a bit old school, it's hard to get used to. <laughs> In terms of diversification of our business, we're always moving forward anyways, that's what we do. So obviously, as we've talked about already, we've got our AS 9100 aerospace standard recently, so we did more aerospace work. But we're a very diverse business in terms of our customer base anyway. You know, not one of our customers has more than 20% of our turnover. So we're very proud of that fact. And at any one time, we're probably dealing with 70 customers out of about 300 that are on our books. You're an engineer at heart. Yeah. What do you love about engineering? I see, for me, it's not just about the engineering, it's not, it's, it's about, it's kind of like an art form to me, there's an art to me in finding, in finding a way of, you know, a particularly clever way of getting around a problem and doing it in a way that you can actually make money, put a margin when there wasn't one before. I find that, I, that challenge, uh, you know, uh, personally that gets me, that, that kind of, um, that flicks my uh, switches, you know, if I can find a part that's something that nobody can make money on and we can find a way of making it pay, that's, that's great. 
So there you have it, an amazing success story from Paul and the team at Rotec Engineering who are bringing engineering back to the UK. And guess what, their investment plans do not stop there. So watch this space because I'm sure we'll be back here again very soon.